Wow, good morning. I hope this is uh, as lovely for you outside as it is for me right now, although I am recording this a day or two before actually this goes out uh, on Sunday morning. It's beautiful out here in the garden and uh, I thought I'd take you on a, on a little journey around the garden as I try and explain what's in my mind to convey to us this morning. As you know, we're in the period of Lent and we decided that uh, these few Sundays we would look at Jesus's journey towards Jerusalem, uh, a journey which I guess he wasn't looking forward to at all, a journey which uh, he didn't entirely know what would hold for him other than it would end with his crucifixion, his death and his resurrection. Um, what I want to show you is that the way he lived this journey uh, was con entirely consistent with the way he did life over the previous three years and some of the key elements of the way he did do life. And the first is that um, he always knew that he lived in the presence of his father. He always knew that Father God was with him. He was filled with the Holy Spirit of God. His whole ministry was one of being part of the Trinity and seeing what amazing effects that had on society and individuals and uh, people around him. So right from the beginning of his time when he's baptised with the Holy Spirit as he comes out of the Jordan to times alone up on the mountaintops to saying things like I only do what I see my father doing to praying desperately to the father in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's entirely consistent with the presence of God in his life. That was, that was the key thing. He was God. He was fully man and fully God. But his most precious thing of all was his father was with him. And when he um, experienced separation from his father as he was being crucified, that was perhaps the most desperate time ever of his life. So the first thing we need to note is that Jesus lived in the presence of God, father and spirit with him the whole time. The second thing we need to note is his sense of living in the scriptures. So right again at the beginning of his ministry when he's being tempted in the wilderness, there's this um, constant refrain of Jesus in response to the devil of it is written, it is written, it is written. Other times when refuting Sadducees or Pharisees, he will say things like, have you never read? Meaning in the scriptures or towards the end of his life, um, saying things like uh, the scriptures must be fulfilled and then after his resurrection on the road to Emmaus have you not read in the scriptures through all the law and the prophets he lived his life to the bible he he knew that the truth about him was in there that that book was his story and that he looked, if he was to live out life fully he was to relate to that story be obedient to God in it even to death on the cross the third way in which he did life which I think is so instructive for us, is he did life in community. He didn't do life in rituals. He didn't do life in events. He did life in community. He walked alongside his disciples for three years, up mountains and along riverbanks, into different villages and around campfires. He went fishing with them. He had all sorts of adventures with them, uh, as you can read in the Gospels. But he did life with them. They were with him wherever he went. He was with them. There was a community of these guys who did life together. They ate together, they drank together, they spent time out in the wilderness or time with the crowds, but they did life together in community. What's the fourth way in which he did life? Well, he was always on the move. He was always traveling, always going on to what God had called him to next. Never static, never still, always wanting to reach the whole of the people of Israel throughout what was then Palestine. Whether he was in Galilee or Jerusalem or going through Samaria, wherever he was, he was on the move. It was not a static ministry. It wasn't a synagogue where he went to the same place every Sunday. It was something that was mobile. He was always going on from one place to the next. There was always this sense of development, this sense of moving on in God, which again is something which is so key to the way we understand him. At this time of year, it's the journey to Jerusalem starting in Galilee and going up through the countryside till finally we have the triumphal entry on what we now call Palm Sunday and then the amazing events that followed after that. The fifth way in which Jesus did life was to always be on mission and seeking to see his Father's will done. 
He had no doubt about what he'd come to do. He was here to demonstrate God's love and his breaking in upon the earth. He was here to see the lost sheep of Israel finally have a shepherd that loved them and cared. He was here to see them rescued from death by giving his own life. He had no illusions about what the mission was that he'd called that he'd been called to and he did life in the light of that mission healing people teaching people demonstrating the kingdom as he went and the sixth thing is that kingdom so the kingdom of god was what he came for he announced it right at the beginning of mark's gospel mark 1 verse 15 the kingdom of god is at hand repent and believe the good news and he lived life to see his father's kingdom re-established here on the earth he lived life to see the kingdom established in individuals and in society, to see the, the deaf hear and the blind see and the, the poor have their needs met, those who are near death rescued, those who had died brought back to life, those who had given up been given hope. All dimensions of the kingdom we saw through his, his life, even to the extent of um, seeing his power over nature and stilling storms or uh, feeding 4,000 or 5,000. Just amazing. So those for me are the six things which we see Jesus living life by. So firstly, it's about the presence of God, then the scriptures, living life in community, being on the move, being conscious always of the mission God had called him to, and seeing his father's kingdom established. And those ways of walking, those ways of living life, those ways of going up to Jerusalem are ways in which we too now need to walk. That is actually the, the essence of what it means to be church, those, three, those six things. It feels to me at the moment like we as threshold are in a place where we've kind of come away from Babylon. That's behind us. There's a city in ruins behind us. Beside us is a cairn, something we've been asked to build a pile of stones and each stone is one of these six things there are other things maybe as well but this cairn is about how do we get to where we are now but it's also about how do we move on ahead across this unfamiliar landscape that we're now faced with but we believe God showed us would happen how do we now traverse this desert how do we return from exile to a new way of doing life and the answer is in doing life together in these six ways that's what God has shown us. So we're going to cross this desert together with those six, six things in mind. So I'm going to move around the garden now just to illustrate the journey, but, but just to say something about each one in a place hopefully which will help us remember. See you in a minute. Well, here behind me is the fountain. Hope you can both hear it and see it. It's beautiful in the sunshine, glistening on the top. This reminds me of the presence of God some life-giving water that is always with us. And the first way in which we need to do life together is in the presence of God himself, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, life-giving water all around us and through us and filling us. That's the way we need to do life. Church needs to be a place where God is immediately present. He's always there. We hear him easily. We follow him easily. Where he is in our midst healing and restoring and speaking and comforting and challenging and all the things we need him to do. It's not about knowing about God, it's about knowing God. It's about experiencing him. It's about experiencing him in beauty and in truth, being full of him the whole time. It's about each of us living in a rhythm of life where we are constantly <clears throat> relating to him in a way that brings us that life. Where our prayer life is the way we do life. Where our worship life is something of all of life. And, and worshipping is just naturally what we do as we live life to him throughout the day. Sometimes in song, sometimes in words, sometimes in deed, sometimes in creativity, in whatever way God asks us to do. But let's put his presence first and foremost above everything else that we do. If he's not with us, <coughs> we don't want to go from here, do we, anyway? So let's live life in his presence. Secondly, let's live life according to the scriptures, just like Jesus did. Let's build our life on the truth in his word. Let us be able to say like Jesus did, it is written, it is written. Let us believe that there is a God in heaven who loves us, who created us, that we are his creatures, that there's a separation between God and man caused by sin that the Bible records the antidote for, which is the death and resurrection of Jesus, the Saviour. 
let's live life according to its principles let's run in the paths of its commands because he has set our hearts free let's be clear about the way we should live life and live life together let's be clear about biblical principles as they relate to the sanctity of life as they relate to sexual ethics and relationships as they relate to all the model in society the compromise in society that we need to move away from if we do not found our life together on this book then we won't steer true we will deviate from where god wants us to be we will be compromised and the salt will lose its saltiness let's found our lives on this word of god let's build it into the way we think the way we do things let's not neglect the, the word of god this table would often have many people around it, especially in the summer outside. Alas, none at the moment because of the restrictions on us. But actually, doing life around the table is exactly what Jesus did with his friends. The words we see in Acts 2 echo that because that's how the church wanted to do life together after his resurrection and the coming of the Holy Spirit. So they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, the breaking of bread, the fellowship and the prayer. They did life together in community. And it's funny, isn't it, at the moment when we can't gather easily, actually we are building community in ways that we didn't do before. There's a lot of connection between people, a lot of sense of people keeping up with each other. A lot of the sort of relationships we built over the years are really valuable because we know that we love one another and we're there for each other, even if we can't see each other very well right now. And that's so much more of what church is supposed to be than attending things together once a week. It's about doing life together, round tables, understanding what our weaknesses and strengths are, forgiving each other, having grace for each other, providing for each other. That's so much more the church that, we, that Jesus envisaged. That's how he did life with his disciples. That's how we should cross this desert. That's how we should do church, the other side of this desert is in a sense of community or communities across an area, across a region that God gives to us. So, community is next. And the fourth thing is this sense of journey. I hope not to make you seasick now, but we're going to go on a journey around the garden a little bit. Jesus was never still. Well, yes, he was up a mountainside in the morning speaking to his father. But in terms of his ministry, he moved on as other people needed him. It's interesting, isn't it, that Threshold, its Latin name is Lyman. Uh, you've heard of the use of the word liminal space, I guess. And a threshold is somewhere right at the edge of a doorway or underneath a doorway. And when you're on the threshold, you've kind of left the room behind you, but you haven't quite entered the room that's ahead of you. It's a place of change, of transition. It's a place where you are always moving on. Now, it's not to say there is no stability in life. Of course we have stability. We have stability in terms of our relationship with God and with each other. That's really important. But in order that we can fulfill the mission God's give us, given us, we're not called to stand still. We're not called to be immobile. Yes, we should be uh, committed to particular locations that we're in but not to the detriment of never moving away or thinking of the places beyond us where Jesus has yet to be known. So let's keep mobile. Let's have a place where we have a sense of always looking to where God's taking us next and being secure in him rather than being secure in location. I hope that makes sense. Hello, the fifth station around the garden is this wonderful old door, which used to be a pantry door hope you can see the old Victorian slats there to provide ventilation. We've now built it into our garden door, one of them. And it's to remind us that in ordinary circumstances, uh, we'd be encouraging each other to leave our homes, to uh, go to where God is working amongst other people. It's about the mission of God, this. At the moment, we're being restricted, rightly so, for safety's sake. Although it's wonderful to hear how uh, many of you are looking after so many other people in the villages where you live, the communities that you, you do life in safely, uh, online, dropping shopping. It's just fantastic. Thank you so much for all that you're already doing. And thank you for all of you who kind of do that as a way of life anyway, whether we've got a virus around or not. 
And this door is to remind us that's how we should normally do life. It's about uh, going out beyond where we normally would be comfortable and finding that Jesus is out there beckoning us to join him with those who don't believe, who don't know him, who need care, who need his presence, who need us to be just there normally alongside them, being there for them, able to answer questions if they come, not pushing ourselves, just being there to serve and to do life with those who in the community, whether they believe or not. It's called the incarnation or uh, seeing Jesus come in the flesh. It was about being alongside other people and that's how he wants us to be. And yes, there is a time to speak, there's a time to serve, there's a time to love, there's a time to see things happening in power and people healed and restored. But there's also time just to be friends and just to be there and just to go beyond where we would normally be, not to kind of shut ourselves away in church buildings or little cliques, but to be amongst friends who we can do life with. So that's the fifth one. And finally, Jesus did life with his disciples, living for the kingdom of God, the kingdom of his Father to come. And we should do the same. Life is not about building empires for this church or that church. It's about seeing the kingdom of God come together across the earth. It is about locally and it's about globally. It's about social action and it is about people coming to know Jesus, being forgiven and being brought into a whole new dimension of life, sharing in his death and resurrection. It's about people being freed from addictions, about being, people being healed and protected and delivered. It's about truth being brought into society, about business practice changes, about a holistic view of a kingdom view of the earth, of creation being brought back into schools and in the consciousness of the culture that we live in. It's about feeding the poor. It's about meeting the needs of the hungry. It's about seeing people brought into dignity and value that currently have no dignity or value. There's so many dimensions of the kingdom, but that's what we should live for. And as we see the signs of the kingdom, as we see the kingdom spreading out in front of us is to cooperate with what God's doing and to live for the coming of our Father's kingdom, to pray for the coming of our Father's kingdom. As Jesus taught us, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This uh, peach tree you can see behind me spread out enormously over the years, and I think it's going to continue to spread out. It's blossoming now. Lovely sign for me of the kingdom of God always expanding, always blossoming, always bearing fruit. And that's what we should live for in his kingdom. So those six things, those six markers, those six stones from a can are the way in which we need to move forwards in our life as individuals and together. And I think will form the shape of church that we should be living in for the future. It is about doing life together in all those ways, in the presence of God, founded on the scripture, in community, mobile, focusing on his mission and his kingdom. If we, each of us, seek to know and to figure out what those things mean for us in our family life, in our life at home, and in our other spheres of contact and communication with people, then we will do well. We will get to the other side of this strange landscape and we'll get there in good shape in a way that God can use us for the future. So God bless. Hope that's been useful. See ya.